Hi and welcome. After Unity's recent change with the new pricing system, many developers are actually considering to use Godot in place of Unity. So in this video, we'll see how to use Godot from a Unity developer's point of view. To get started, you can just go ahead to Godot. Once you're in the download page, you can just click on the download engine. So the download size is just 60 MB, unlike Unity, which is like 4 GB for the editor and then another 1 GB for Visual Studio and any other module you download, it keeps on getting added. Godot is just 60 MB, plain simple zip file. And once you have the zip file, you can just extract it and start running it. Godot engine by default works with the GD script. If you want to use C Sharp, then you have to download the Godot engine.net version. So depending on your requirement, you can download either one of them. Once you've downloaded, just extract the zip file. So I've extracted the zip file here. Just double click on the exe. So you'll have a project manager window here. So just click on new project and give it a name, give it a path and select the renderer and click on create and edit. Unity takes somewhere around five to 10 minutes to start a new project because it loads a lot of packages in the background. But in case of Godot, as soon as you start a new project, it takes somewhere between 5 to 10 seconds to actually load the editor. Now, before you start working with Godot, you need to understand how a game scene is executed in Godot and how it is different from Unity. Now, in case of Unity, in a game scene, we add all the game objects to the hierarchy and any properties that you want to change for the game object, you add components in the inspector window and all these together will create your game scene. And in case of Godot, there is no concept of game objects. There is only concept of nodes. So every game object is a node and all properties like the components in Unity is actually added as a child node. So if you have a player in your scene, you have an enemy in your scene and you have some environment objects, then what you need to do is first create a player scene where the player's root character will be the root node. For example, if your player is a physics body, then you can create a kinematic root node and name it as player. Then if you want to add collision to the player, then you need to add a collision node as a child to the kinematic root. So we have a game scene here and you can see it has a player component and a HUD component. So player is our player scene and HUD is our UI scene. So in order to use this player and HUD here, we have already created a player scene which has a player node which is nothing but a area 2D node. It has an animated sprite which is a child node and a collision shape for detecting collision. So generally these things are added as components in Unity and here this is added as a child node. Similarly, if you go to the UI node, we add a canvas layer node as the root node and then we add the text labels as child to it and the button also is a child to it. So similarly, you can create multiple scenes and then in your main scene, you can just add them as instance. So this is a major difference between Godot and Unity's workflow. So this might take some time for you to understand, but once you create a game or two, you will have some good understanding of how to use it. Now that you understand the basic workflow difference between Unity and Godot, now let's see some of the basic windows that are available on the Godot editor. So the scene window here is very similar to hierarchy in Unity. And the file system window here is very similar to the project window in Unity. Then we have the output window, which is nothing but console logs. Then we have the inspector on the right, which is also inspector in Unity. Now to add a new node, you can just click on other node or you can select from any of the default nodes here. Once you click on other node, you will have a lot of options to select from. So select the type of node that you want to add. So in this case, if you want to add collision shape, then just add collision shape. And once you select the node, you'll have the properties on the inspector. So you can change the properties here. You can add a box shape or anything that you want. You can change the transform and the position, rotation and scale of the node. And all nodes will have an option to add a script. So before we get into script, let us see some other options that are available in the Godot editor. In the top here, you have an option to switch between 2D, 3D scene, and then you can switch to the code editor which is inside Godot. So this is available only for GD script. If you're using C Sharp, you will have to set up a third party code editor. Then you can also access the Godot's asset library which is very similar to Unity's asset store but does not have as many assets as Unity asset store. So you will have limited number of assets so you can just download them and install onto your project. Now once you have your scene set up to test it, you can use the play button here and once you press play, you will have a game window that shows your game and you can start playing your game and testing it here. Now to add a new script, 
every node will have a script option here. You can just click on the empty here and say new script. Here you will have an option to select C Sharp if you have downloaded the .NET version. Otherwise, you will have only JD script here. In Unity, all the scripts are by default inherited from Mono behavior. In case of Kodo, it is inherited from the node to which you are attaching the script. So here you are attaching it to node 2D. So it inherits from node 2D. Then you can set the path and the name here. So by default, we'll leave it as node2d.gd and then just click on create. So this is the default script. So if you selected C sharp, it will be a class with the name of the script and it will inherit from node2d. And it will also have two functions, ready and process. Ready is the same as the start function in Unity and process is the equivalent of update function in Unity. Time dot delta time that we use is called delta in Godot. Now Unity has a lot of inbuilt function like for on collision we have on collision enter and on collision exit. Similarly, Godot has signals for each nodes. So you can select the node and go to the node tab here and you will see a lot of functions here. For example, we have the body entered and body exited. So these are used under the collision pretext. So whenever the external body enters the current game object, then this signal will be called. Now you can connect this signal to a function in your script by just double clicking on it. Then it will say receiver method. So you can give the function name here. It can be a new name. Then click on connect. So what Godot does is it adds a new function with the name that you have provided. And whenever this signal is triggered, this function will be called. The type of signals will change depending on the node that you have selected. For example, if you select the timer node, you will have different types of signals. And if you selected the position node, you will have different types of signals. So any signal that you want to use, you can just double click and say connect. Now, if you want to call an existing method, then you can just use the pick function here. and It will show you the existing methods that are already there. And then you can just select the existing method and click on OK. This was a quick basics of Kodo that you require to get started. So you'll be able to slowly master this by creating new games. There's also a converter, which we'll talk about in the next video. So stay tuned and see you in the next video.